This is a short story about Manu the neighborhood cat, who is in danger of using up all of her nine lives. Manu has left the sheltered life of her home and is determined to make her way in the world. Excited in her newfound freedom in the neighboring homes and gardens, she soon becomes frightened and lost in an unknown environment of the outside world she so eagerly entered. Every animal Manu meets in the neighborhood represents a country, family, and a sense of belonging. The summer is coming and friends are hard to find. Can she survive and can she find her way home again? Once upon a time, in a neighborhood brimming with flags and animals from all over the world, lived an elegant cat called Mano. She had sparkling emerald green eyes and silky brown fur. Despite being housebound, Mano is a freedom-loving and independent cat, or so she thought. <coughs> Mano lives with City, her guardian, who loves her so much that he can't imagine life without his precious cat. She is his treasured pet, and he tells everyone She's the most remarkable cat he's ever seen. He likes to hear her purr and have her ear rub against his hand, which isn't often as Mano can be timid at times or even run away from strangers. She has food whenever she wants and sleeps in a cozy bed with lots of favorite toys. She doesn't go outside very much, but in the winter, City opens a window so she can watch and listen to the birds in the garden. Life is good for Mano, but it gets boring too sometimes. She wants more than love. One day, Mano is restless and decides there isn't enough going on at home. She just has to get away. I'm leaving this house and want to see more of the world. So I've got no time to say goodbye to anyone. And I don't think City would understand anyway that I have a life too. I don't know when I'll be back, but I'll come back soon. Or so she thought. She has no idea what to expect outside the garden wall and the unknown world of next door neighbors. Mano thinks it's going to be one big adventure. Mano wanders off down the road, going back and forwards, investigating every smell, sound, and sight that fascinates her. She's glad to be free, and nothing escapes her attention in the world of the unknown neighborhood. Back at home, City was worried because Mano was missing. City's pet dogs, Snowball and Tigre, search and sniff every brick, bush, and blade of grass, but found no scent of Mano. They sniffed under the cars and around the trees, but it didn't smell like Mano. The timid cat had never left home before and was always on time for dinner. Where could she be? City looked everywhere expecting Mano to come back home soon. But she didn't, of course. I will never tell Mano off again as long as I live, promised City. No matter what she does. Land of the Rising Sun, Japan. Only way to have a friend is to be one. On the rooftop, the Japanese flag flutters. The garden is full of miniature Japanese models of the Tokyo Tower, Mount Fuji, Tokyo Sky Tree, and some shrines. Mano sees a troop of little Japanese macaws or snow monkeys cuddling together on the branches of the cherry blossom trees. They have short little bodies covered in a coat of gray brown fur with a reddish face that reminds her of humans. They love the warmth of the sunlight shining through the trees and make their nests high up in the branches where they can sleep at night. In Japan, 
they spend most of the time huddling together in the snowy mountains and dipping in the hot springs to keep warm. Mano watches the gentle monkeys chattering away, grooming and cleaning each other, while the rest are sharing and feeding each other on fruit, leaves, seeds, flowers, and sweet potatoes. The other macaws are indoors watching a large TV screen showing Doraemon, Pokemon, Hello Kitty, and Naruto. One monkey, Nutmeg, notices Mano and she says, Are you lost, little cat? You can live with us if you like. Mano looks confused as she has never seen animals like this before in her life. Being polite, Mano says, Thank you very much, but I have an adventure to go on and see the rest of the neighborhood. Very well, little cat. Good luck on your adventure, says Nutmeg. Go that way, says another maquis, pointing to the next door neighbors. Before Mano leaves, Nutmeg says, Here, take this for your journey. She gives her a small parcel of Japanese sushi wrapped in a pretty napkin and a bottle of water. Smiling and waving, she thanks all the maquis for their good advice and food before disappearing over the wall to the next adventure. She was so grateful to the maquis and thought they were very polite and helpful considering she was a stranger. Ah! The Land Down Under Australia. Thankful today and every day. A huge flag of Australia flutters and flaps in the gentle breeze outside the house. Mano gazes through the windows and sees an outback room full of golden sand with a sign showing a jumping kangaroo. Displayed on a long wooden table are Australian historical model buildings with a 4D cityscape time puzzles. A didgeridoo windpipe and colorful painted boomerangs hang on the walls. Mr. Kangaroo calls Manu over. Hey there, little cat. Come in and I'll tell you about this outback room. The real one is in Australia, of course. But we made our own here in the house. We got the sand from the Arabian desert and brought it back home. Two kangaroos and a koala are in the back garden. However, this isn't a traditional thing for kangaroos and koalas to do. They normally live in the wild in Australia. Mrs. Kangaroo and her baby or Joey, are hopping among the trees. Mrs. Kangaroo has large, strong back legs, huge feet, and a thick, long tail for balance. They are far too busy nibbling on tasty grass snacks to notice Mano, who has never ever seen animals quite like this before. Miss Koala looks just like a teddy bear with short gray fur, big round ears, and a funny roundish nose. High up in the eucalyptus tree, she chews on the leaves and watches Mud. Miss Koala was tired of eating those eucalyptus leaves and says, Why do I have to eat these all the time? I want to eat something different. She climbs down from the top of the tree and shouts to Mano, Hey, I'm on a walkabout. I'm looking for something different to eat. I'm tired of eating eucalyptus leaves. What do you eat? Mano replied, 
I like sardines and catnip. Miss Koala grinned and laughed. That doesn't sound very tasty. Never mind, little cat. I'll see you again sometime then. With that, she slowly wandered off and climbed up her acupilitis tree to carry on chewing the leaves. They tasted delicious. I guess these leaves aren't so bad after all. She smiled and ate leaf after leaf until she was full. Joey, the baby kangaroo, normally wore glasses because he couldn't see very well. He looked upset and thumped the ground with his long feet. He had looked everywhere in the garden and around his tree, but his glasses were nowhere to be found. He was so annoyed that he began to blame Miss Koala for the missing glasses. Suddenly, Mrs. Kangaroo appeared, holding his glasses in her large, sharp claws and said, Here's your glasses. They were on the tree where you fell asleep last night. Now please go and say you're sorry to Miss Koala. Joy felt very bad and went to say sorry to his good friend, the Koala. It made Joy feel much better knowing that Miss Koala had forgiven him and they were still good friends after all. Mana understood it's not fair to blame somebody before you know for sure what's happened. She ran off and jumped over the wall to her next adventure. One country, many names. India. Friendship is another word for love. Fluttering on the rooftop is the Indian flag. Mrs. Devi, the gray cow, rests in the peaceful back garden with her baby calf at her side. Mrs. Devi has a large shoulder hump, horns, and large ears. How beautiful and special this cow looks, Mano says to herself. They were quietly munching on grass and vegetables. At first, they didn't notice Mano as they were too busy enjoying their delicious food. It reminded Mano of family togetherness at her own home with Siddhi. Mrs. Debbie looks up and says, Let's go inside, little cat. You look hot and bothered out here in the sun and the heat. You can tell me all about your family. Inside the house, there is a large architecture room with a model of the Taj Mahal and temples. The best model is the world's tallest statue, the Statue of Unity. Mano really likes the space room with a model of the Indian rocket named GSLV, model planets and the moon dangling from the ceiling. Mrs. Devi takes Mano to the yoga room with the statue of the tree, yoga pose and the model of the bridge, yoga pose hanging from the ceiling. In the background, the history of yoga was playing on the large screen. Mrs. Devi shows Mano how to do a little bit of yoga. And to the cat's surprise, she's not afraid at all to try even though it was her first time. She liked it very much and found it very relaxing. With a big smile, Mano licks her lips after lapping up every last drop of fresh milk that Mrs. Devi had given her. The gentle cow tells Mano about the best way to get home again. It might be a good idea to look at the house numbers and then look out for your home with a flag of a black cat on a blue background. Keep an eye out for the cutie 
and model cat statue that you told me about. Mano felt quite at home with the cows and admired Mrs. Devi's kindness, generosity, and gentle manners. She's so grateful for everything Mrs. Devi had done for her and for teaching her how to do the yoga poses. Feeling refreshed and much happier, Mano stalks off onto her next adventure, which happens to be next door. The Great White North, Canada. Courage is doing what you're afraid of. High up on the rooftop, Mano sees a beautiful flag of Canada. Mano's too frightened to cry when she finds herself standing in the middle of a space which looks like a big pool with three enormous Atlantic walruses. They all have wrinkled brown and pink skin, long whiskers, flat flippers, and a lot of blubber on their bodies. They're gulping down sardines, all piled up in buckets. Mano can't help but lick her lips and feels hungry again. The walruses take pity on the poor frightened Mano and invite her into their home to see their incredible ski resort. The house has five floors. On the first floor, the skiing area has an ice rink, bathroom, kitchen, changing rooms, and temperature controls everywhere to keep it super cold and frosty. Mano is given her own bedroom with a huge TV where she can watch all her favorite programs. Next to the bedroom, is a beautiful spot where she can listen to relaxing music and look out the window, her favorite pastime, and watch everyone at the ski resort. Let's have a party, eh? bellowed one walrus. And take our new friend Mano skiing, tobogganing, and rolling down the slide. Mano had a secret that no one knew about. She couldn't ski or toboggan. I'm not skiing or rolling down any slide, announced Mano. She didn't want to be afraid, but just couldn't go skiing no matter what. That is until she discovers how kind her new friends are. Turn out to be more helpful than little Mano could have ever imagined. She didn't like snow or water, but the walruses gave her special ski shoes, a ski outfit, a pole just the right size for cats. It wasn't so bad after all, and Manu soon started enjoying herself on the slopes with her new friends. The fourth floor has three amusement areas. The first is the edge walk. Manu felt very nervous doing the edge walk because it was so high up, very cold, and on a snow-covered glass steps. A walrus instructor comes over and shows Manu how to do the edge walk. It makes her laugh to have a walrus teaching her new things that she'd never ever done before in her life. Manu is amazed to see a conveyor belt taking fresh fish from the restaurant to the ski resort. Of course, she soon starts to feel hungry once more with the wafting smell of fresh fish. The second amusement is the glass slide where the walruses can slide from the fourth floor all the way down to the basement. The walrus instructor gives her a sliding mat and tells her to hold on tight. She laughs so much that tears come down her face. As the mat bumps down the slide, she feels so excited. Wee! Wee! She cries out while whizzing all the way down from the very top to the basement. The third amusement is the indoor glass bridge 
where only the brave can look down at the ski resort from the top. The most exciting ride has to be the first space elevator in the basement that can carry passengers all the way up to a walrus space station, 300 kilometers from Earth and travel at the top speed of 500 kilometers per hour. Manu has never been up in space and couldn't resist the chance to go with one of the walruses. It was the chance of a lifetime. Both of them tried the delicious fresh sardines at the space restaurant before returning back to the Canada house. Mano spends the rest of the time meditating and relaxing with her new friends before leaving again on her next adventure. This has been one of Mano's happiest days of her life. She says, Goodbye, my friends. See you again soon. To her new friends and climbs over the wall to the next house. She's more enthusiastic than ever for an adventure. Land of the free, Thailand. A mother is your first friend, your best friend, your forever friend. A huge Thai flag flies on the roof and another in front of the house. In the tropical garden, a herd of elephants are peacefully munching on bananas, grass, roots, and branches. In Thailand, elephants represent strength and loyalty. Inside the Thai house, there's a large room with a huge golden Buddha statue, model temples, and the miniature tower buildings. In the background, there's a movie screen showing off Bangkok and other cities in Thailand. A circular elevator spirals up to the third floor where there's a rooftop sky garden and observation tower with a view of the whole town. The sky garden spins and turns three times before it comes down again. Blinking stars and constellations dangle all around the tower. A movie screen plays short films about ancient temples and how they were made. The second floor has a miniature models of Phuket City and famous mountains. The Thai restaurant is open all day for visitors and elephants. The first floor has a huge bedroom and bathroom just for the elephants. Outside, Mano watches the children making a horrible mess in the garden. Food and toys are all over the place. Mrs. Elephant looked at Manu and tears flowed from her beautiful eyes and down her face. Most of the time, she was such a strong and happy elephant and never cried unless something serious has happened to her family. She wanted to go inside for a rest and get some peace and quiet from the family. The children had other ideas. One wanted to play football with his mom. Another wanted her to read a story. And the little baby was throwing her toys all over the place. The children followed Mrs. Elephant everywhere. And so she never had five minutes of quiet time. Mano said, take a rest, Mrs. Elephant. I'll speak to the children. Mano calls the children over and they listen carefully to every word she says with their large flapping ears. Please, please be good little elephants and put all your toys away when you finish with them. When you eat, please put all your rubbish in the bins. 
your mom wants to take a rest during the day, so that's a good time for you all to tidy up your mess in the garden, and then you can play again later with your mom. The elephants swayed their heads and ran up their mom, promising her they would be much more responsible for their toys and rubbish. They also promised they'd be much quieter and tippy-toe around while she was taking her nap. Mana was pleased that Mrs. Elephant was finally going to have five minutes of peace and quiet. Let's start now, she tells the children and keeps a beady eye on them as they pick up all their toys and put them back in the toy box. After clearing away the mess in the garden, they run indoors to hug their mom. Feeling much happier, Mana waves goodbye to her new friends, jumps up and over the fence with her tail held high. She has many more adventures to come. Two Seas Kingdom of Bahrain Dream a Little Dream Mana walks along in silence, sniffing all the strange smells and alert to everything. Nearby was a strange scent that Mano had never come across before, and being inquisitive, she has to have a peek in the next garden. Sitting on the golden shimmering sand and resting in the shade of the trees is a herd of Arabian orcs. They're very alert and have good eyesight. They looked up and gazed at Mano as if they'd been expecting her. Hello, good afternoon, said the largest orcs. Do you know where you're going? Not at all, Mano said with a laugh. I'm a bit lost and trying to find my way home. Mano has never seen Arabian orcs before, and she couldn't spot them at first, as their skin had no reflection at all. They were almost invisible in the daylight. They loved the hot weather, eating grass, walking a lot in the desert, and keeping closely together in their family group. Inside the house, there is a room called the Desert of Bahrain and the floor is covered in real desert sand. A large screen on the wall shows an animation of the desert and all the animals that live there. Once in a while, the animation changes to the skyline of Manama City, and then when an orc walks away from the screen, it changes back to the desert again. The head of the orc's family asks Mano to join their herd, and so she follows them into the room. Inside the desert of Bahrain, Mano lies down on the silky golden sand and starts to dream about Sidi. How terribly she misses him and how much she wants to be home again. Family had become everything to her. On waking, Mano thanks the orcs and tells them she has to go on to her next adventure, which of course is next door. You must miss your family very much, and I know you'll find them soon. So don't worry, says the oldest orcs. We shall let all our neighbors know that you are on an adventure and need to get home again to your family. Take this bottle, and when you hold it, you'll always remember us and have nice dreams. The orcs gave Mano a little glass bottle of sparkling gold sand. Dream sand. The land surrounded by water. Mexico. Don't quack like a duck, soar like an eagle. Perched high up on a prickly pear tree is the king of the skies. The golden eagle with gold brown feathers gleaming on the back of his head and neck. He has a powerful beak and talons. With unblinking black eyes, 
sharp as clear winter night. The golden eagle watches Manu climb over the wall and into the garden. He was expecting her. You are Manu, the eagle asks. Don't move an inch and stay still. The golden eagle suddenly swoops down and reaches out with his talons to grab a green slithery snake and then takes off again with a wiggling snake dangling from his talons. Mano was so frightened that she runs off into the house thinking the eagle is chasing her. But of course, he wasn't. He had just saved her life. Inside the house, Mana looks at fun facts about Mexico. On the ground floor, she admires famous Mexican architecture and ancient temples. A miniature model of the world's largest pyramid in Mexico sits on a huge table in the middle of the room. Upstairs on the first floor, Mano visits the Mexican restaurant where she can smell the spicy aroma of tacos and tortillas. Unknown to Mano, the Golden Eagle had followed her to the restaurant. I hope I didn't frighten you, Mano, but there was a snake in the garden and it was right behind you. Mano feels silly now and says, Thank you for saving me. I was so frightened, and that's why I ran away from you. I will always remember you, Golden Eagle, for your courage, power, and strength. The Golden Eagle is full of wisdom and honesty. He looks her in the eyes and says, We have inner goodness, Mano and can make a positive difference in the world each day. We are part of a family here in the neighborhood and do not live for ourselves. We are not perfect, but we try to be our best and do our best. With that, he turned and flew out the window to his prickly pear tree in the garden. Full of determination and her adventurous spirit, Mano keeps going and hightails it over the fence to her next adventure. Albion, Britain. I like the night. In the garden, a family of barn owls are nesting in the hollow of an old stumpy tree. On the rooftop, the Union Jack flag gently flaps on a pole. Nearly the same size as Mano, one owl opens an eye and ruffles his tawny feathers. With his sharp vision and excellent hearing, he keeps a beady eye on the uninvited visitor. Inside the British house, there's a word room where the owls can type a word on a tablet and the word appears on a chart on the walls. The architecture room shows famous landmarks all over the country, such as Big Ben, Tower Bridge, Stonehenge, the Kelpies, London Eye, etc. Next is the 200,000 Ideas Room, which is a huge pit filled with red, blue, and white balls. If you throw one ball into the idea machine, more ideas magically appear on the screen. Mano decides to have a go on the mini slide in the pit and have fun lying down among the balls. The first floor is the graduation hall with swings and the screen showing the planets, energy, technology, and pollution. Best of all, you can look at the screen while swinging. The Barn Owl family have a lovely bedroom on the same floor. Baby Owl is like any other Barn Owl, 
that ever was, but for one thing. He is afraid of the dark. Dark is horrible, he tells Mano, and so he won't go hunting at night with his parents, ever. Mrs. Barn Owl sends him down from his nest hole to ask Mano all about the dark. You can see through the shadows of the night and hear the sounds of silence. Don't be afraid, Mano tells him. Sit with me and look around you. They huddle together on a large mossy rock in the garden and gaze up at the sky. It was getting dark now and they could see the small tip of the moon peeking out from the clouds. Baby Owl watched the moon while it climbed higher and higher in the sky. They sat close together in silence and just stared up in wonder. If I'm looking at you, moon, then you must be looking back at me. We must be very good friends. The moon didn't answer. And then Baby Owl said, Baby Owl flew down to the path. He looked up at the sky. The moon was still there. It was following him. No, no moon, said Baby Owl. It's kind of you to like my way, but you must stay up over the city where you look so beautiful. Baby Owl walked on a little farther. He looked up again. Perhaps there is magic in the dark after all, he thought, and flew back to his nest. Mano was all alone again. Feeling happy that Baby Owl was no longer afraid of the dark, she made her way to the next house. The Mountain of Whiteness, Kenya. Be grateful for family. A big sign on the porch says, Welcome to the Mountain of Whiteness. Unknown to Mano, a mighty lion is resting in the shade of a fountain tree. He shakes his beautiful golden mane and fixes his amber-colored eyes on Mano. It's getting dark now, and Mano sees the reflection of the moon in the lion's unblinking eyes. Quickly, she runs into the house to escape from the lion thinking he might attack her, but finds out he's really a friendly but very sad lion. Inside the house, on the ground floor, there's a large map of Kenya and a red equator line on the floor. You can stand on this line with one leg on the north and the other leg on the south. A huge Mount Kenya model and ancient buildings all stand proudly around the room. On the first floor is king size bedroom and a bathroom just for the lion. Now Mano was really scared and for hours she had been thinking about home and her family. She gazed up at the sky but couldn't see much because of the great fountain trees. The moon was full and the thought of being alone and lost in the wild neighborhood at night with a lion took her breath away with fear. She gave up all hope of finding her way back home and sat down with her face buried in her paws. The thought of all that had happened and what might happen yet made her shudder. The lion is the strongest of all the animals. It is good to have strong friends. I shall go to the lion and make friends with him. Mano finds the sad looking lion under the tree. Why do you look so unhappy, Mr. Lion? The sad lion replies. I don't like living alone all by myself. And I miss my family in Kenya. I have a pride of lions in my family. My mom, sisters, aunts and cousins, and I've not seen them in such a long time. 
Don't be sad, Mr. Lion. I'll be your friend and my family will come to visit you. I promise. All the animals here in the neighborhood will come to see you every day when I tell them that you are all alone and don't have a family. The sad lion's eyes instantly lit up and soon they were playing games together and talking about all the things they could do on Mano's visits. It was if they'd been friends forever. I have to go now, but I'll be back very soon. So don't be sad, Mr. Lion. You're strong. Mano said to the now happy looking lion. And with that, she waved goodbye and sprang over the wall. She knew there was always hope for the future, no matter how lonely it had been for the lion. And he would never feel lonely ever again. Epilogue. Cat tired, Mano flung herself down at the edge of the road and sighted a powerful sigh. After a fidget or two, she fell asleep under the twinkling stars. Just as she was falling asleep, she felt she understood the secret of life and what it really meant to have a family. She missed City just too much. She longed for her bed, her toys, and the home she had left in search of adventure, of which she felt she had enough. But in a way, she also felt more confident about herself, which was a good thing, she thought. In the light of the morning, Mano slowly woke up when she heard City's voice calling out her name. Mano! Mano! Where are you? Where are you? Is that City? Oh, thank God! Mano was so relieved and cried out of joy. City had been walking around the neighborhood with Snowball and Tigre for hours when he finally spotted Manu outside the Kenya house. He couldn't believe his eyes and quickly ran to cover the tired cat with her favorite blanket. Where have you been, Manu? I missed you so much. City was so happy and shouted out, we found Manu! She's outside the Kenya house. Let's have a party and celebrate. Let's get a special cake with a model of Cutie and Manu sitting together on the top. This is the happiest day of my life. The end.